Jesus. Good morning, class. Good morning, class. Good morning, class. <clears throat> we have some few more minutes to start. I I don't know the population is still very few, very low. A few more minutes to start. I don't know the population is still very few, very low. Mm. 
While we are waiting for it to be nine, because the lecture is supposed to start immediately after all these announcements, may I quickly say that While the lecture today? It to be nine, because the lecture is supposed to start immediately after all these announcements. May I quickly say that the lecture today?
if the governor is around, can you raise your hand so that I can unmute you and communicate with you a little? Are you all there? If the governor is around, can you raise your hand so that I can unmute you and communicate with you a little? Are you all there? Okay, okay, okay. Ah, Taufik. Taufik, I think I've unmuted okay. you. Okay. Okay. Ah, Taufik. Taufik, I think I've unmuted okay. you. Okay. okay. I'm not sure I'm hearing you. Okay. I'm not sure I'm hearing you. Yeah. How are you, Baba Tunde? The, I want us to start immediately. Now for the extra time, I was trying to see if uh, I can speak to you, to all of you through you, yeah. that you, you record Thursdays, 9 to 11. Now for the extra time, 11, I was trying yeah, to see if uh, I can speak to you. Tuesday to, to you day, day day, 9 to 10, then Monday. Days. Four to five, nine to eleven, and then what is this nine to ten? Please check on this time. Have you recorded this time? No. I think those signs are free. That is why I'm giving you Thursdays nine to eleven, Tuesday nine to ten. Those are Monday, four to five. Thursday, nine to eleven. Wednesday, nine to ten. We can discuss. Yes, we can discuss that later. Let's start the class. Yeah, thank you. Wednesday, nine to ten. We can discuss. Yes, we can discuss that later. Let's start the class. Well, good morning, everybody. This is Chemistry 176, Organic Chemistry 1. You are welcome to the class. And I am Dr. Sue So, Well, good morning, everybody. I'm sharing the... I'm sharing my slides with you already, and the classes are starting. Well, you have the course contents we are the head of units, Professor Shuni Barry Mosakini, you are conversant with it. It's already um, things you know, the content of the whole thing. Now, my own task, like you can see, is the third bullet there. And we'll be starting right away on the ether. Really, we finish that. My first content has a mean. Then the carbonyl compounds constituting the aldehydes and alkanoes specifically. Then 
the alkanoic acids, the carboxylic acids, and their derivatives. So we start straight with the ethers. What are ethers? You are all conversant with water. The water molecule has the oxygen bonded to two hydrogens. So ethers are derivatives of water having organic uh, molecules substituting the two hydrogens. Look at that second bullet. You have the oxygen in the middle bonded to two alkyl groups or it could be an aryl or an alkyl. Then it could be two phenyl groups, that is aromatics. So we have this as the general structure of ethers. So in other words, ethers have both hydrogen and water being replaced by the organic uh, groups. Briefly, this is the breakdown of what we are going into. Uh, you have been uh, introduced and uh, taught how we name organic compounds generally. But when we pick each of these group of compounds, I want us to see some additional, some little additionals that will make you conversant with this group of uh, organic compounds. So briefly, we'll touch that. Then we'll be looking into their properties and applications or uses of such groups of compounds. Then after that, we go to uh, some general reactions of that group of compounds we are touching. And therein too, we may try to look at their chemistry along with some mechanisms. Then we end up looking at how they are formed, that is their synthesis and their preparations. So we go straight to ethers, like I said, and uh, we look at um, how they are named. Briefly, let me say that we have four methods of naming ethers. And the first method is utilizing or rather named with their common names. And the common names here are such that uh, you have the hydrocarbon groups named in alphabetical order and ending the word, ending with the word ether after you have named them. Let's quickly see one example, one or two examples here. Look at this example. We have this methyl group here. You can see my cursor. And then we have the ethyl group sandwiched by the functional group ether oxygen. Then you will see um, the methyl and the ethyl. And the ethyl alphabetically comes before the methyl. So the pattern of naming this compound will be ethyl, methyl, ether. That would be the most appropriate alphabetically. The second example has a phenyl group and a propyl group. The phenyl alphabetically comes earlier than the propyl. So this is better referred to as phenyl propyl and you end with the word ether. These are some few other examples which you can always do at your, look at at your leisure. Because at the LMS platform, I've placed this one to there so you can easily uh, address them. Actually, I've placed some answers, the answers to all these therein. So you can master this aspect very, very well, following this method of the first method. So we now go straight into uh, the second method. In the second method, we are going to consider naming symmetrical ethers. And just straightforward, 
since they are the same groups that are being sandwiched by oxygen, what we do utilize is make use of dye. The hyphen dye is utilized here. Look at this example here. We have a methyl group and a methyl group here. Since there are two and they are symmetrical, we just say straight dimethyl ether. This one has two propyl uh, groups on the ether molecule. So this is better referred to as dipropyl ether. So it's as straightforward as that. It's not difficult at all. Now let's go to the third method. In the third method, we will be looking at ethers from the perspective of looking at the two hydrocarbons that are linked to the ether. The, we will be considering them in terms of the acoxy or phenoxy derivative of the, hydro, of the hydrocarbons. The smaller group or the lighter hydrocarbon will be ending with OXY, oxy. And then we name the bigger group, which is the parent one. The second example here, the C2H5OC4H9, the lighter group or the smaller group is the ethyl. So we take it as the ethoxy. And then the parent one is a butane parent. So we name this one as ethoxy butane not the other way around. Since this one is symmetrical, just take one of the methyl and we name this one as methoxymethane. Same thing too, you have these other examples, it is not difficult, just make use of that. And I have the answers to some more examples I'm giving you here. Especially let's consider that number one. The number one in A has a branching. We have a pentane material here. On the pentane material, in the middle, at position number three, you have the ethoxy, the lighter group here. And that's why this molecule ether is better referred to as three ethoxy pentane. So, the, on the three position, you have the ethoxy. So it is called the three ethoxy pentane. You can check on the others. It's uh, very simple to name. So the fourth method is utilizing or bringing to use the trivial and the, or rather the common name. Trivial because it's old. Uh, but though is an old name, but it's highly uh, welcome. It's still make, we still make use of it in organic chemistry today. I have even the structures below because it is accepted. Now the first one here is referred to as anisole. That's the trivial name. It is the methoxy benzene. You can see the methoxy using that stored method. And then you have the benzene ring. So that's methoxy benzene. The second one is phenytoyl. That's the trivial name, the common name. And you have the ethoxy benzene if you are going to name the IUPAC way. Now, the third one here is the three membered epoxide. It's quite common. At times, we also refer to it as our oxy ring, it's a three member cyclic ether epoxide, also known as epoxy ethane, ethylene oxide. The last one, the fourth one there is tetrahydrofuran, is the five-membered ether, which is tetrahydrofuran. It is um, short formed many times as CHF. You are going to mix up CHF in textbooks and at times too in this course, we will be using that CHF. So just take cognizance of it that it is tetrahydrofuran. It's not difficult at all. So we are now come to the properties, applications, and uses of uh, some of these ethers. Well, ethers are utilized 
as organic solvents. In all our organic synthesis and reactions, even in industrial processes, we have uh, these ethers being utilized as solvents. Uh, the most common among ethers is this diethyl ether, which is still a succeeding. If you recollect very well, is a di is a symmetrical ether. That's why we call it. Um, a diethyl ether showing the symmetrical aspect of it is utilized as solvent in the lab. They, we make use of it in anesthetics too. And at times even in the lab, we refer to it generally as do you have ether? When they say ether solvent in the lab, we, we are referring to diethyl ether. It's of high industrial value and importance. So just like water is common, we have this diethyl ether used as solvent in the laboratory. Now, most of these ethers are volatile, like I said earlier, and especially the lighter form, and they possess a kind of acceptable sweet odor, um, especially even the aromatic ethers. And that is why we apply them in cosmetics and perfumery. They easily catch fire, and that is reflecting their low flash points uh, property. They have very low flash points, so you don't expose them to uh, beer flames. Mm. They easily catch fire, so they are uh, in the laboratory. So they cause fire explosion. So you have to handle them with care every time you are handling ethers. Now, still on their properties, uses and application, uh, the cyclic ethers, we have two of them here. This second one, THF, tetrahydrofuran, and the first one is epoxy ethane. They are quite important in the lab. They, they have reduced volatility. They are easier and safer to handle, especially the THF, because it has the ability to donate uh, its long uh, pair of electrons than more, most other ethers. It's um, slightly basic, capable of forming stable complexes, especially in the Grignard reactions. When we are making use of Grignard reagents, it's a very good medium for conducting Grignard reactions. Uh, THF could be, have been the most suitable medium when we are performing such reactions, but it's not economically viable. Uh, though it's recently producing some commercial amounts. Now, uh, these epoxides, happen to be colorless, low boiling liquids. We can easily uh, obtain it from the reaction of um, ethane, oxidative reaction of ethane at that high temperature, 300 degrees C, utilizing silver catalyst uh, there. Then, there is this uh, alcoholysis of epoxy ethane that results into some monoalkyl ethers. These are them, the, the trade name cellosol. Uh, they are applied in varnishes and lacquas, since we are still on some of their uses and applications. So these are the, they are important as varnishes and lacquas. Then the dimerization of epoxy ethane uh, under the catalyst result to give this dioxan is a very good and useful organic solvent. And it's more, more, more so it is miscible with water, this dioxan. Now, um, just more information on their properties. 
for smaller members of these eaters, especially those ones who've been considering, you will see that they are polar because of the ratio, uh, high ratio of the polar oxygen to the hydrocarbons. The heavier ones or higher molecular weight members are more have more hydrocarbon-like uh, properties in them, and uh, they behave as if they are all carbon equivalents uh, of relatively same molecular weights with them. Now, considering the boiling point of some of these ethers and uh, their um, hydrocarbon equivalents, they have very close um, boiling points. For instance, if you look at diethyl ether, it has boiling point of uh, approximately 35 degrees C, and the molecular weight of pentane, which is close to diethyl ether, has about 36 degrees Celsius, which are quite close. So they, they are, in terms of boiling points, the two of them are close. Also, they are modestly partially soluble in water. And you can show this by using your simple calculation to get the molecular weight for each of the um, each of them. They are molecular weights. That's diethyl ether and pentane, with uh, seventy four and seventy two, which are quite close. So generally, ethers are highly flammable, like I've stated earlier. They are especially uh, uh, they are highly flammable, especially the lower aliphatic ones which are more gaseous and volatile liquids. They also have characteristic smells and odor and utilize in perfumeries and uh, cosmetics. Now, their oxygen atom have a shared pairs of electron, though it's not associated. So because of unavailability of suitable hydrogen bonding, especially that could have resulted in their liquid state. So many times their boiling point is quite close to the hydrocarbon counterpart like we saw for the diethyl ether and the normal pentane. Um, but they are, the boiling point is uh, somehow lower when you compare it to the alcohol that have equivalent uh, molecular weight with them. So it has generally are uh, less soluble in water when you compare them with alcohols. We are coming to uh, deal with or consider alcohols as another group of uh, organic compounds later, but comparing it here, it has uh, less soluble in water. Still on solubility, we see that the decrease in solubility in water as their molecular mass increases, that's for ethers. Uh, simple ethers like methoxymethane and methoxyethane are less dense than water, and they are sparingly soluble in water. So solubility of ethers generally decline very rapidly in water as the hydrocarbon content of the molecule increases. For Aromatic ethers, these ones are generally denser than water. If you place them in a test tube in water, you will find out that they will be at the bottom. They are denser than water. Now we come to how they are formed. That is their synthesis or what we refer to as their preparation. And here we will be considering them in three perspectives. That is three major methods. Please, I want you to listen very well and take your jotters and try to see how we have placed them in these three perspectives. Depending on the major, uh, the, depending on the method of obtaining them, of preparing them. The first one there is a dehydration uh, method where two molecules of alcohol are linked or bonded together, 
eliminating a molecule of water. So it's a dehydration uh, reaction of alcohols. And this usually results into forming symmetrical ethers. You are used to the word symmetrical ethers here. The second method we can is Williamson's ether synthesis. That this method can be used in obtaining both symmetrical and unsymmetrical ethers with uh, alkyl or aryl ethers. Let me also say that let's consider, let's uh, take, let's put concentration or rather consider their methods of the mechanisms of all by which these methods also go. It's another aspect of chemistry that will be important uh, for us to understand the details of these uh, preparations. The last aspect or the third one is this uh, method whereby we warm haloalkanes with dry silver one oxide to obtain symmetrical ethers. So let's go uh, deeper into each of these three methods. The first method there is by dehydration of alcohols. And like we said, we result into obtaining symmetrical ethers. This is a very good example. We have two molecules of ethanol being catalyzed by sulfuric acid H2SO4 and uh, the elimination of water uh, gives the diethyl ether. So ethers here in dehydration of alcohols, oh, uh, we have two molecules of the alcohols being split, said, removing a molecule of water to give the symmetrical ether. So it's also a condensation reaction because of the, um, we are bringing on, we are bringing together two alcohol molecules and we are also eliminating or removing uh, water molecule from it. So the equation is stated below where you have these two uh, alcohol uh, molecule ethanol and then you have your diethyl ether. I've used this red to show how the water is coughed out from the two ethanol molecules there. So that's the mechanism for that reaction or you can look at where the condensation is obtaining. So in summary, let me say that symmetrical ethers with lower alkyl groups are prepared on industrial scale, uh, which are utilized as solvents by this method. And this is uh, a very common and important method for preparing what the most common ether, which is the diethyl ether. It's needful to tell me you here that uh, our elementary chemistry shows that whenever you react uh, H2SO4 with uh, alcohol, we have the, uh, it results to give us our unsaturated alkene under um, this condition that is concave to SO4, but at 180 degrees. That's a general reaction of alcohols. It's usually undergo dehydration involving elimination to give alkene. But for us to obtain this dehydration method, the uh, condition, choice of reaction condition is very, very important. Yes. And that is why I'm highlighting it here. That for this second, first, and this method of dehydrating alcohols are uh, to obtain ether, our diethyl ether in this example is being heated with conch H2SO4 at 140 degrees. And there must be continuous addition of ethanol so that we have excess of the alcohol and we now have 
the symmetrical diethyl ether B, which results from that reaction. So the condition is important here, please. And that's why I placed it in red. The choice of reaction condition, very, very important. When it's at 180 degrees, you have the alkene being formed. But at 140 degrees Celsius with conch H2SO4, under continuous addition of the ethanol, that is excess of the ethanol, you have your ether being formed. So please take cognizance of that. It's very important, please. Now, very, very briefly, there is need for us to know that the structure of our alcohol uh, determines the mechanism in which this dehydration reaction occurs. Ether is formed by dehydration. Uh, ether is formed by dehydration of our alcohol by a nucleophilic substitution reaction. And the, the reaction could be either SN1 or SN2, depending upon uh, the protonated alcohol. Is it losing water before or simultaneously as the um, acid is uh, attacked by the second alcohol molecule? Straightforward. For bulkier alcohols, that is secondary and tertiary alcohols, the mechanism of the dehydration reaction follows SA1 mechanism. Whereas for our uh, primary alcohols, the mechanism is by SN2 mechanism, and it's not far-fetched. The stability of the intermediate, so to say, carbonium ion C plus that is formed determines the mechanism. We have more stable C plus carbonium ion formed for secondary and tertiary alcohols. And that is why it is going by SN1 mechanism. So the protonated alcohol is capable of losing water before. Uh, the attack of the second alcohol molecule. But for primary alcohols, which have the least uh, um, uh, stable C+, plus, they are more prone to backside attack from the SN2 mechanism. So primary alcohols like N-butanol, we give the N-butyl ether without rearranging and presumably without intermediate cations. So for normal primary alcohols, they are the least capable of forming carbonium ion, and they are more prone to backside attack following the SN2 mechanism. Let's see the next slide that indicates uh, this one. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay. So the summary of it is that uh, for the secondary and tertiary alcohols is summarily by SA1 mechanism, whereas the primary alcohols is uh, the dehydration reaction goes by SA2 mechanism. Now we go to the second method of uh, forming our ethers. And that's the Williamson's ether synthesis. What's peculiar about this Williamson's ether synthesis? This method is quite flexible and very appropriate for forming our symmetrical and unsymmetrical ethers. Uh, the alkoxide ion is first formed. How? We dissolve uh, sodium in the alcohol to form the alkoxide. And then we have the haloalkane or alkyhalide uh, reacting with the alkoxide, the sodium alkoxide or phenoxide, depending on whether we are using the alkyl group or phenyl group. And we have displacement of the halogen from the haloalkane by the alkoxide or phenoxide ion. 
So the alkoxide is acting here as the nucleophile, reacting with the haloalkane to give the ether. So there is first formation of our alkoxide by reacting sodium with the alcohol, later forming and uh, reacting with the haloalkane to form the ether. Now the next slide shows what is happening here. The first formation of the alkoxide over here, since we have ethanol as our starting material, dissolving sodium in it, since we are starting with ethanol, we have sodium ethoxide being formed. So it is now this uh, sodium ethoxide that reacts with our haloalkane, the iodide uh, haloalkane form to give our diethyl ether. So it's a symmetrical um, ether we are resolving to get, but this method is depicting the general form for the Williamson ether synthesis. That is, in Williamson's ether synthesis, please take note of this information. The design, since we have, first of all, the alkoxide or phenoxide form, then reacting with the haloalkane, the less weight or simpler form or unhindered, less hindered alkyl group in the ether is provided um, uh, by the alkyl halide, that is haloalkane. And then the bulkier or more hindered group in the ether is from the alkoxide ion. You will see this better with the example I'm going to give you. Look at this example here in this uh, slide. This is our desire. We want to produce this. We want to form this ether. On this side, we have the ethyl simpler group and we have the bulkier um, tertiary butyl group. From the root of Williamson's ether synthesis, the lighter ethyl group should come from the haloalkane, while this comes from the oxide, oxy group. So to synthesize unsymmetrical dark ethers, then the choice of our reagents, our starting material is very important because uh, the first one up here is the feasible method, which is the better method to get our product. To synthesize our tertiary butyl ethyl ether, this one where my cursor is, the choice must be uh, the ethyl bromide or the haloalkane of the ethyl simpler group. Then the sodium isoxide, sorry, the sodium uh, butoxide, tertiary butoxide of the bulkier group. If you want to go the other way around, you will not get this product. Instead, it will be an elimination product. So this will not be a feasible method of producing our desired product. That's the second one below. So in above example, the use of tertiary halide is not giving us our products. So, or else it will result to the elimination product, which is not our target. That is, this is what you will have in that second choice, which is not feasible. If you have the tertiary butyl bromide reacting with the oxide ion, you will have your elimination product, which is not our target. So that is not it. Sorry, I'm using so many examples, but it's so that you will understand the rule that guides the Williamson's ether synthesis. So to ensure good yield for this method, you use a primary alkyl halide all the time. 
know that there is no restriction on the kind of alkoxide or the alkoxide that could be primary or secondary or tertiary. But if our R in the haloalkane is a secondary or tertiary alkyl group, elimination, result, uh, elimination will have resulted. And then we have the alkane being formed. It's competing with our, uh, um, it's competing with our desire here. So summarily, Williamson's ether synthesis should be designed in such a way that the less hindered alkyl group, which is the simpler one, is provided by the alkyl halide, and the more hindered or bulkier alkyl group is the one that is providing the alkoxide group. Okay. And that is it. Now the third method is where we have the symmetrical ether being formed from warming our halo alkane and the dry silver one oxide. So the arrows can be replaced with any of the hydrocarbons in your paradventure in exam period. Well, it's a very straightforward reaction resulting in symmetrical uh, ethers. Now I have here some practicing questions which I want you to venture into. Finally, uh, I have the answers to these, I think on the last slide, yes. So you can see that here uh, being displayed. Now on the chemistry with mechanisms of reactions, let's consider it in these three perspectives too. Though the first one is the most important reaction, and that's the cleavage reactions by strong acids. The second one is autooxidation reactions that yields peroxides. It's not an acceptable reaction, it's not a very pleasant one. The last one, that's why you see me put X there in red. It's not a very pleasant reaction. The last one, third one there is very germane and common where you are used to it in your greener reaction. Uh, complex formation through a uh, greener reagent. This one yields a number of um, uh, a number of groups of uh, organic compounds, homologous series of organic compounds. Let me, I think it is uh, good I tell you that anytime we have aromatic ethers, even though we are checking on alkoxy ethers here, but aromatic ethers will activate the ring to undergo uh, also para or two four uh, substitutions at those groups, that is at positions two and four positions. Now the more important or common reaction of ethers, like I told you, they're not very reactive systems. Ethers are not too reactive, but the more important reaction ethers undergo is the cleavage reaction, utilizing strong acids like HX. Please take note, this acid is HX because we are coming to that last bullet where we are going to see the trend of the reactivity of these acids. Now, before then, let me say uh, quickly, like I said, that is a major reaction of ethers and uh, they, are, they are unreactive, like I said, towards bases, oxidizing and reducing agents. So under vigorous reactions, conch acid and high temperatures, you have the oxygen carbon single bonds breaking off to, that is a kind of fission in this cleavage reaction. So on refluxing any ether with, for instance, hydrogen iodide concentrated form, the organic radical cleaves it to form the haloalkanes, that is the iodoalkane. And first of all, you have your alcohol being formed, and then you have your uh, hydrogen, you have the iodoalkane, and then more, concentration of the HI in the system can react uh, with your alcohol 
to form more of the iodo alkanes. And that is the it here. Uh, under my condition, you can isolate your alcohol, but with more conk HI, you result having the iodo alkane coming up there. So that's on the general aspects of the reactions of ethers. So ethers are generally less react, like I said, than alcohols. They don't have replaceable hydrogen or proton on them. And that's why you have this as a major reaction of ethers. Um, then ethers do not undergo substitutions with ionic compounds, neither will they react with metals and strong bases. So ethers are similar to alkanes in their reduced chemical activities. Uh, mostly they are utilized as solvent in organic synthesis, like I said, and that's why you can see them utilized as solvent because they are not very reactive. So the chemistry of ethers depend on the CO bonds, that is the OR part of the molecules. The oxygen has two pairs of non-bonding electrons uh, on them, unlike uh, OH on the alcohols. So the oxygen do undergo protonation in acid medium. We are in the mechanism, it donates its lone pair of electrons. So it has more or less are acting as bases when you go into the mechanisms of these cleavage reactions. Yes, they are less reactive than alcohols, more or less they are inert. And uh, the functional group, like I said, is that oxygen that is sandwiched by two archae groups. So they are unreactive, like I said, even to bases, dilute acid, reducing agents, and so on and so forth, like we said. So, and that's why they are utilized as solvents therein. So now, uh, we also mentioned this when we were under preparations. So this gives a kind of uh, mechanism on the general reactions of ethers on this cleavage. You have your acid, though HI we use in that example earlier. I'm just replacing it with HA here, where you have the hydrogen protonating the ether oxygen. So can you see it protonated? That's why I'm den uh, denoting it with a plus. So ether oxygen is being protonated by the HA, which is our strong acid. And then this protonated oxygen is now attacked by uh, uh, the nucleophile, the A minus or I minus, like we have seen earlier, to give the um, halogenated alkyl. And then we have the release of this weak base, that is the alcohol, which is a very good living group. Like I said, if we have excess of the acid, we have this alcohol, uh, reacting further with the uh, acid to give the iodo, sorry, the halogenated alkyl group. Let me say that uh, on the mechanism of the nucleophilic substitution reaction involved in the cleavage reaction of ethers, the HI is more rapid. Um, in the cleavage, that is, the cleavage is more rapid utilizing HI compared to HBr because iodide ion is a better nucleophile than bromide ion, and bromide ion is a better nucleophile than chloride ion. In fact, ASHA conditions will be involved for HCl to participates in this reaction. And that is why the trend on reactivity, which I'm placing in red here, is showing that for cleavage reaction of ethers, the trend of reactivity is highest for HI, followed by HBr and then HCl. So you will recall that on refluxing ether with conk HI in excess, the organic radicals cleave to form 
our haloalkanes, which is in this case, iodoalkanes, since we are making use of HI. So first of all, the alcohol is formed, which reacts with more HI to give the iodoalkanes. Now in a system where you have same amount of HI, um, where you make use of equivalents of same amount of HI, HX and IFA, we have uh, less amount, that is you have less amount of HX. You make possible the isolation of your alcohol that is formed. So, but by the time you have more of this HX, like the conk HI, you have the alcohol reacting more with the HI to give the iodoalkane. It's a repetition of what I've said earlier, that you result getting more of the iodoalkane with excess uh, conk HI in the material. Now for the third, second method, which is autooxidation. Hello? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now the next reaction is the autooxidation, and which I've said is not a very uh, pleasant reaction. It has slowly absorb oxygen to form peroxides when they are exposed to sunlight. So when they are in contact with air, most aliphatic ethers get converted to their unstable peroxides. Good. So the peroxides are unstable. They are uh, dangerously shock sensitive and they explode easily. Even in small concentrations, since they decompose with explosive violence. So it's an explosive reaction. It's not very pleasant, but just for you to know, that is one of the common reactions of ethers. It's an unwanted oxidation, like I said. And many times you have ethers being stored in uh, dark bottles so that they are prevented uh, from forming uh, the peroxides. Though there are some reactions that you can uh, use in removing the peroxides from them. Now, the last reaction is the complex formation involving Grignard reagents. Uh, our diethyl ether, like I said, ethoxyethane, is a very suitable solvent in the laboratory where our diethyl ether is uh, having its oxygen donating electron to the magnesium ion in the Grignard reagent. Uh, the, what depicts, what depicts um, uh, this is that the diethyl ether or ethers uh, rather are very good medium where the Grignard reagents uh, uh, is well involved in the Grignard reaction in that perspective. So the chemistry below is what I've given. But let me say that, that this reaction is a, uh, a practical application that results into forming a number of ho important homologous series of uh, organic compounds, like your hydrocarbons, your alcohols, your aldehydes, your ketones, your carboxylic acids. So this Grignard reaction is a very applicable reaction. But just take note that IFA here is a very good medium for such compounds to be uh, produced by the Grignard reaction. Uh, the next aspect we are going into are the alkanamides. And I'll just introduce you in the couple of minutes, definitely less than 10 minutes before Professor Shonebare comes in very soon to uh, uh, round up his lecture, which he has started with you physically before. So we come to the Akanemins. Akanemins is written in our uh, content, our course content. But let me say straight off, we have them generally referred to as the amines. 
because we have both the aryl and the alkyl forms of these amines. So we have the alkanamines. Yes, alkanamines. You are used to, or you are, you know the structure of ammonia. Ammonia are NH3 systems. So these alkanamines, or rather amines, are derivatives of these ammonia. We are I have these examples up here, where you have my cursor as examples of amines over here, which are derivatives of ammonia. Can you try and name some of these amines? Where my cursor is moving here. Have you seen them? Great. Uh, briefly too, because he has taught you the general way of naming organic compounds. But I will just put some inclusion or here. And that is the first aspect we will just look into, which is on the naming and of uh, some of these uh, academics. Briefly, these are some rules that are guiding. Somebody is raising up hand. Okay. Just within five minutes, let's go through this, please. That uh, the alkanamines are really aliphatic forms of our amines. And on this first slide here, on this slide before us here, amines are organic compounds that contain a central nitrogen bonded to one or more carbon atoms, which could be alkyl, cyclic, or phenyl or aromatic group. So they are more or less derivatives of ammonia, like I said, where carbon atoms are replaced by either one or two of all the three are being replaced by the alkyl groups. Over here, you have the, this as examples, where one of the hydrogen in the ammonia is replaced by a methyl group. So we call it a methyl amine. This one is replaced by two methyl groups, so it's a dimethyl amine. The last one here, third one, all the three hydrogen in the ammonia is replaced by three methyl groups. So that's a trimethyl amine. So we have replacements of the hydrogen in ammonia, which are which results in our amines over there. So they are quite abundant in uh, nature and they are of high biological importance. Uh, we have them quite common in am amino acids, proteins, nucleic acid, enzymes, coenzymes, vitamins, even some drugs. So you have this. The nitrogen in such amines are sp3 hydridized with lone pairs residing in the sp3 orbital. It means invert at room temperature, and this we'll be looking at in their chemistry at their transition state, where the sp3 nitrogen becomes an sp2 nitrogen in the um, inverted form. Uh, on the physical properties of it means they, we will see that they are involved in hydrogen bonding and it's affect their boiling points and solubility. The lone pair electrons on nitrogen atom causes the amine to react as bases, sharing the lone pair with a proton as a nucleophiles. Uh, you can name this. I think we better stop here so that uh, we can have Professor Shunibare come in very soon. Let me see. Uh-huh. We will comment, we will continue from there the next time.
okay uh, so i'm pausing my sharing um okay Sir, can you take over, sir? Um, Mo gbo sa but mi mi ti ri oruko yin ni se ni wa bayi be ni Okay, Okay, 
もう一つはどこに行くのだ ?I should be with the two times just Peter and for sure you see it. It's a bit too big to sign. No, I'm with everybody. Yeah, allow anybody to share screen. Okay. Okay, what you allow you like your mute, sir? You in particular. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hey. Wala, wala, wala. You got it. Yes. Hey, what's wrong with you? Come here. Oh, we don't understand anything. Oh. Many people are dying. So many people are given a chance to commute this stuff, Abby. I mean, I'm just the short for this place. Where's your T.Y.? I beg, how many of you understand waiting the book for, for, for today? I understand waiting. Waiting they talk. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. 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 I Hey, please let's be let's be we are behaving we are behaving okay class am uh, <laughs> hello 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 to I will go. I will go. Okay. Ah. <laughs> Please mute your mic. <laughs> you know, it's possible for me from here to know those that are talking. So I mute all of us. <laughs> we are still trying to work on that. Now, uh, the last <laughs> time we met, out of the five. <laughs> So today we are going to look at the last part of my mind, part of the course. And after today, I think other lectures will just continue with you. So I hope that we will to finish in the next uh, 30 or so. Okay, we are looking at isomerism.
I know that this one you have been taught at uh, just yesterday, just like a kind of communication. When we say actionalism is the whereby we have two or more compounds that have the same molecular formula, the different physical and chemical properties. This the compound which is if it as are known as isomers. And basically, we have um, two, uh, two principal types of isomerism. We have uh, structural isomerism and uh, stereo isomerism. Uh, structural isomerism, this occurs when two or more compounds have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. In fact, from the name structure, so they have the same molecular formula, then having different structural formula. And on that is, I also have many times. First one I have here is nuclear or chain isomerism. It's concerned with the arrangement of carbon atoms in the molecule. That is the structure of the nuclear. Even though they have the same. As you see from this example, this is C4H10. Structural this is a trade chain compound. Okay, this one is as branch. Structurally, they are different. The molecular, they have. Women, people are dying. The other one has to do with position as well. Please, you guys should mute your mics. I don't understand. You are not teaching, mute your mics. Ah. Please mute your mic. See if you don't want to learn, at least don't keep other people from learning. <laughs> And even your own is echoing. <laughs> I will pursue it for a cup of me off that mic. That of oh, mic off it, please. Now let's hear a word. I don't know the one on the same so yes, this is for finance. 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 This Let's look at the next one. Let's look at the next one. 
and he said to me, 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 that's I think that of this we can't hear you, sir. Guys are interrupting you, sir. We can't hear you, lady, sir. What's the answer? Sir, please what? mute everybody's mic. Some guys are yeah. running their mics. They are distorted. And you have to have come to the police. You have to have come to the so as I was saying, in this case, there are the two of them that are the same with the color of the black. Sour. I cannot see your screen. Sour, we cannot see the screen. Sour, we cannot see your screen. This is a enough form. you guys are all complaining that you cannot hear me. Please try to mute your mind. Please mute your mind. <laughs> But see, as I was saying, that the two compounds have the same molecular formula. Then, because of the movement of the molecular formula, the yeah, <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> I have to So, I have to point to So, I have to point to So, I have to point to I have to point to So, I have to to So, I to I to 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 I'm seeing the slide, so it's not a general problem. 
So, first of all, when two compounds are the same, the total of the total the the Sorry, Alpha Edwards. Some contracts are not as well as the other one. Often quite some of the things are found in some that are past and it's an action. I want to do my higher carbon advancement. We are talking about the two things. The carbon atom that are those are actually not to carry out. They are able to attend the position of the polarized light. First of all, to call in short part, and those are called objects that are all those images. And if the compounds are displaced in the front of the new, we do not call it in the front of the new, we do not call this compound is has four bounce electrons, carbon like the Nitrogen likes to form three bonds. In most cases, two compounds. Oxygen likes to form two. Uh, then each one is an anatomical. And the other helicopter. So, the total of one anatomical looks like a diamond. That's why I want to find it. Some of you are talking around that side. Who's trying to make you sing as if you've never been around that side? Someone that's doing this. What they do with the other people can't walk away and can't be separated from me. Thinking my neck is how I made it while I'm at you want to cut it. Up again and they can never take it from me. Who's that person? Save this week. I mute everybody. I'm not the one that I said it's on. So that's why. The host should not everybody. I'm not the Who is that guy that wrote this kind of I mean, guy should stop what he's doing now. Please, this is ridiculous. We have not heard anything in the same apple. And someone is playing Eminem in the background. It's more like a sci fi thing. Guy, I didn't want to watch that. I mean, I'm dying. Just is that guy that wrote this is something. Is that guy? Please, please. 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 Please.
Please try and move every other participant. Oh my God. I beg now. And the person may stop waiting for background. The person say, I beg now. Ah, I don't go talk me. I don't know. Now, now, don't I talk lecture? I just want to talk to you and lecture and let you know if you talk again like this. The person disrupted the glass. That should be a god, though. That person should be a god, though. And I don't know why you'll be a you'll be life pleasure. Hello. Okay, so I think we are continue now. So let me go back to what I said. I said, first of all, small two compounds have the same molecular formula and structural formula. But one compound is not compound in possible for the other. And some compounds are held as set optical isolates, also known as set electrolytes. Um, optical isolates are working on the compounds that have this electric of higher carbon that don't affect them. Those are the compounds that are here. That's a compound. It's very symmetric because the electrons that are and join all the four atoms join to the carbon atoms to be fine. Not so it will not decide on the score that's a solo each. Well, if you play this compound with four of the front of the mirror, you have to have an idea that is always like opposite of what you have here. In the world, we say the electron lights are also supplying the possible one and the other. If you try to play this one and the next one, not to the of the 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 well, down now, we're talking about the anti alpha direction, and that is all I'm saying. Why not? Why not? And we get it from you know, I think you're so not important to concentrate, but I want to potentially come back to the full line is that we're having the same in the opposite direction. So, in case now, you know, I'm talking about the long term of the and the I saw this thing. And that's how there is a around the carbon atoms. Either 
and the result of the presence of one to come down on the presence of the other on that stage of the purpose. On that one to point to one again, we have to time, we have the space and time. That's why I'm going to line to the towards the line on the same side of the bottom of the town is called six high so one. Now, when the certain tool is lying on the opposite side of the bottom of the town, it is called a crown and so much. That's our example. Most of the way here on the same time, we're going to be saying that this is first high so one. And this one, we are going to be able to blend all this one time. And if I go from an example, it is a one, two, three, that is a big thing. And in sense, the two is the same. But the two, the most sense we have seen is the same side, the same thing. We call it six, two, and two. But that's another one. One of the same things is on this side, the other two things on this side, that I can talk about that much part. And then it's trans, two, and two. You are not species, but you are not each other. The trans and four ones are all of this long stream that is so high so much. But if you are safe, you are going to be able to cast it. If you write, you can see this form. You are going to put this one at the line. And for the trans, on the team of direct acid, you will have to find the same. So it is a so you can see that the trans is almost given than the than the same size so number. The two at the same time are different things in that and then the car. So that's the end of the electro to a good function by so when you have that set on the arms and you have set on the language as your SS within them. Uh, the reason that for them to do the different type of guys we have on that feature, because it's not going to be 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 not Any question that you want to ask? We can't, we can't, I can't hear anything like echo. The echo is too much, echo, nothing. Ah. <laughs> Who the fuck is that? <laughs> Dev. <laughs> Uh, we could not hear you there at all. The echo was the way you can work on it. Change your room. It's probably due to the echo. We can't hear you clearly at all. What is all this now? The echo was too much, sir. This. So is it just my chat that is disabled? Is everybody's chat disabled? Please work on the echo, sir. Not everybody. Yes. Can we have the chat so that you can play with me on the chat? I'm going to even play. I'm half. I'm half. I can't keep on like this. I'm out. 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 I'm Fire boy, she a variation. We call you do 
I bet we'll both be the play song for you before. I said, that game, that game, that coverage. I said, yeah, I said, the bar. Yeah. Oh, now we're done, Sharp. No. Hello, class. Well, we, we are very grateful yeah. Professor Shonivara was able to talk to all of us. And uh, I, I started the course this morning and he took over and he has rounded up with you. He will definitely be giving you more information, uh -huh. maybe tutorials and questions and so on and so forth. Let me also say that uh, for my own lectures, it continues. Officially, I'm supposed to see you on Thursday. Please, everybody take cognizance of what I'm saying as the okay, last uh, announcement. On Thursday, I will see you by nine. But because okay, you're free, 10 to 11, I'm going to make it a okay, two-hour lecture. So please, prepare yourself for Thursday, especially. Yeah. Yes, Thursday, yeah, tomorrow will be 9 to 11. Sorry, Thursday, yeah. this week, will ah. be 9 to 11 a.m. Ah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Today, we have made it. He has, he has attended to wow. you to 9 to 11 today. But next week, Tuesday, it will be 9 to 10. Because you may not be free after 10. But let me also say that Thursday 9 a.m., I'm going to meet with you. Be prepared with your jota near you. And if I, I, I may not post anything at the LMS level again, you just click uh, on the link I've given you and we continue our lecture from where we have stopped today. Uh, so we are starting off on the Akanamais. We are, I just briefly introduced exactly, you. Exactly, no problem. So 9 a.m. on Thursday, we are meeting. But put it in half that every Mondays 4 to 5 and Wednesdays 9 to 10 will be added. Hello? Apart Where's from the... our official, Hello. yes, officially, everybody listen to me. Officially, Tuesday 9 to 10 and Thursdays 9 to 11, three hours. But huh. I'm also adding Mondays 4 to 5 p.m. and Wednesday 9 to 10. <laughs> so that we can go at slow pace and we can go <laughs> so your tutorial questions will also come up so I wish you well yeah, it's funny and be successful we believe it will be more ah, successful thank you can you can make it you can hear you well you know uh, I will send the notes of what I taught you today on your uh, platform so I think from that you can so, then uh, not download it. So I want to have a question. I asked a question. What is the question? You can go ahead and ask your question. Okay, sir. Um, with, with the slides you shared the other time, yes. what's the difference between this position is, isomerism and functional group isomerism? Position has to do with the position where the functional groups is att attached. Why functional isomerism has to do with different, I mean, isomers having the same molecular formula, but having different functional groups. You know, the yes, example, I gave you an example of alkana and al I, I, alkanone. I think I gave you C3A6 or something like that. The one, yes, sir, one I have a question, sir. Of alkanone. So, the two of them are the same molecular formula, but the functional group different. Oh, thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Please, I have a question, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. With the uh, slide we shared on the LMS, please, sir. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. What was it? I can't hear you. Mm -hmm. I can't sir. hear you. Yeah. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning. I have a question, sir. Yes, I just asked that we share. Uh, I just asked that we share on the LMS and said yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can't. Yes, what sir. I'm saying that I should do like what? the lecture. The, the, the lecture of today. I thought we need be shared on the LMS. I told you, yes. I'm going to send it. Maybe I will send it on WhatsApp to your class. Uh, is it class rep now? Class governor, captain. Then you can then post okay, sir. And other lecture, uh, the other lecture that took us would that one be shared with sister? I think she will do it. Okay, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. 
So I have a question. When you are explaining the dextral rotatory and labral rotatory, so I didn't kind of understand the aspect. We said we know we have an anterior mass. So normally, the one uh, we said they are optically active. The one that we rotate it clockwise. Okay. Another one we rotate it, rotate it anti-clockwise. But when you have uh, equal mixture of two of the two, we call that one race slip. And of course, going to be optically inactive because as one we're rotating it 50% to the uh, clockwise, the other one we're also rotating it 50% uh, anti-clockwise. So it's like you are not having any rotation. So that's why it's going to be optically inactive. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. sir. Another question is that um, the professor that uh, talked, the lecturer that uh, talked, to the lecture, she said we are going to be having unofficial class on um, Monday, four to five p.m. So I didn't hear the Wednesday uh, time period. Unofficial class. Wednesday. Yes, she said. She said we are going to be having the official class on Mondays and Thursdays, and we are going to be having another classes on Wednesday. Oh, official classes on. Tuesday and Thursday. Yeah, Tuesday nine, and Thursday. Nine, right? yeah. Tuesday, 9 to 10, then Thursday, 9 to 11. So she said, she said we have another section, like Monday, 4 to 5 p.m. And yeah, that's mm -hmm. unofficial. Uh, when is it? And when is it? 9 to 10. Okay, so okay. Thank you, sir. Do I have that question? Yes, I have the question, sir. Okay. Is on an optical isomerism. So I want to uh, confirm if um, optical isomerism is the basis for the manufacturing of vaccines, in the sense that, um, of for what? example, now when the COVID nineteen was out, I I just what? meet some guys and they were like in manufacturing vaccines, you create something that is um, optically um, different from the um, virus, and then such that it can like. Um, um, like destroy the, the 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 virus. Like they were like the COVID nineteen vaccines. They they are just identical to the COVID uh, to the virus itself. Or the only difference wait, is that they are wait, um, wait, optically wait, wait, different. Wait, wait. So I just want to like make inquiry because that is that true? It's not true. Okay, sir. It's not true. Um, okay, sir. A vaccine uh, development or manufacturing is more complex than the. Uh, what you are saying is it's not because of maybe one is optically active and going to attack. No, I, it's not optically active. It's it more did, than that. Oh, I hope there's no question again. So I will meet you on Thursday. Yeah, so I have a question. Sir. Okay, let's go ahead. Um, so the uh, what you are talking about, I don't really get is that isomerism part, and I cannot even see it well on my. I can't even see it on my screen, sir. Yeah, it's your screen. It's your problem with your screen. It's not a general problem. As I said earlier, an isomerism should not be new to you. It's what they taught you at the SS3. <laughs> the only difference is that no, at SS3 they just know that you have structural isomerism and geometric isomerism, so they may not likely tell you the different types of uh, structural isomerism, and that's what we are just going to do. So, I will right, send I this uh, the the notes, uh, straightforward. I will send the ones you read the note, I think you should. It's not possible for me to go over, over, over everything again. So, but I will send the note to your classroom that will share it on your, your platform. So, I have a question, sir. <clears throat> Yeah. So the positional isomerism, I don't really get what they meant by the arrangement and all, sir. It's, when you read the position, it has to do the, the position. When I think the example I gave you, the two <laughs> compounds, they are alcohol, but it's just the position of the OH group that uh, makes them differ from one another. I think I, I can't remember, but I think one is uh, propan one or, and the other one is pro two or, propan two or. So just the position in one, the OH is on the first carbon atom. 
the other one, the OH is on the second carbon atom. So even though they are, they are the same in terms of uh, molecular formula, in terms of functional group, it's only where the functional group is attached that uh, makes them differ. So we call that one position isomerism. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So let me just go. So I wish you all the best. Hey, Peter, someone is what's the meaning of your unofficial class? Is it a physical class or will it still be virtual? Everything is virtual. But now, everything is virtual. Monday, 4 to 5 p.m., Wednesday, 9 to 10, Tuesday, 9 to 10, and Thursday, 9 to 11. Thank you. Just write it down. I wish you well. God bless you too. Okay, not the one you choose. I have a question, ma. What's your question for me? My question is that I'm going to drop the class. Check the LMS platform, and also the YouTube's were also formed along, so you can always have the YouTube. Thank you, ma. God bless you, ma. I wish you well too.